Violets are blue, roses are red, and this porch light is kind of sad. Somebody didn't place the power outlet directly above the center of this table. So now I need to find a way to move the light above the table without showing any power cord on the ceiling. Ideally, there will be a kind of invisible box to hide the power supply, adapters and my secret stash of powder that nobody can ever know about. Let's call this box the white thing for now. From this white thing, there should start a second part that provides the light over the table. This part can be visible or should even function as an eye catcher. And since drawing a long black line is the only thing I'm capable of, it seemed like a good idea to make something long and black. Like a long black thing. I decided that the Japanese Shogiban technique would be a perfect fit for the long black thing I craved so much for this design. So I jumped right in and quickly prepared some pieces of wood to run some tests on, as I was burning with desire to see what it would look like. I tried different types of burning techniques and found out that the propane torch was the best fit for this application. After charring a couple of wood species, I decided that pine was giving me the best results. More specifically, this piece of thermal wood that gave me a deep crocodile skin type of texture. The downside of Shogiban is that the wood stains when touched, so I need to find a way to seal it. I tried using this rubber cover that I found in the kitchen, but it was looking kind of weird, so I decided to run some tests with other sealants like this tongue oil, water glass, epoxy and regular and spray on varnish. First up is tongue oil. This oil from tongue tree seeds has been used for centuries by people who have been using it all this time. They say that the oil dries up and seals off the surface of the wood. Allegedly. Second in line is sodium silicate, also known as water glass. This is used a lot in ceramics as a binder or top coating, so let's give it a try. Third in line is epoxy, you all know what this is, so blah 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 blah. And then we have the clear coat varnish. Apply it with a brush and with a spray can, because I can. While the sealants are drying, it's time to work on the light source to stick in the long black thing. To get a continuous light beam, I bought this LED strip with a ridiculous amount of LEDs. To cool this puppy, I bought some aluminum profiles to mount on the LED strip. A black diffuser that comes with the profile helps me to diffuse the light and make it look like a watered down version of a lightsaber. I checked my pockets to see if I could find some additional components and found this power adapter that was fucking adorable, along with some other electrical wiring that I happened to need for this project. What a coincidence. I then quickly connected everything like a pro and plugged in the power cord to see Ok, the sealants have dried, time to analyze the results. The tongue oil sucks because it's still greasy, the water glass needed some extra layers and ain't nobody got time for that, the varnish is kind of smarnish. So that leaves us with the epoxy, which gave me the best results in the shortest amount of time. whoop de doo Now back to the light source. Before cutting the thermal wood, I decided to do some extra testing to check the width of the light beam when installed in the long black thing. I made a template in MDF with different hole sizes and tested them all in a dark room, which was kind of scary. At this point I've done so many tests, it almost started to hurt my testes. So it was time to get started on a final piece of wood for the long black thing that one day I will stick into the white thing. Once I reduced the plank to the right thickness, I defined the dimensions and started by milling out the hole for the profile. With a slightly smaller bit, I gave it another pass to cut through the complete plank to allow the light to pass through. Only after all the milling was done, I used my track saw to cut it to the final width. 
This way I kept a larger workpiece that is easier to clamp and manipulate. I know, I was blown away as well. Now I only had to chisel away some bits of wood to make the profile fit. And I have to say, that feces was tight. Then I marked off the area where the beam will connect to the metal plate that will be mounted on the ceiling. I used a saw and a chisel to remove the wood and then cut the piece to the final length. With a drill press I made the holes for the magnets and since I was in the neighborhood I also made a small gutter for the electrical cord to pass through. When I was done removing material from the wood, I ended up with something flimsy and weak. Not what I imagined for this long black thing. But the show must go on. So I lit up the torch and went on it as if I was working in a crematorium. I made sure to keep the right distance to the wood for proper charring. I also burned the stick on all sides equally to keep it from bending in the wrong direction. Also. Please like and subscribe as the profits will go to charity. To add the epoxy I used a metal beam as an underground as it is both straight and portable. Now as soon as I placed the workpiece on the beam I saw that all the charring made it look more like this overly ripe banana. This kind of made me feel like a charlatan. To set things straight I used the clamp in the center and hoped that the epoxy would fixate it. I used a small brush and picasoed away all the loose parts before adding the epoxy. As I was applying the epoxy, I noticed that the workpiece was bent in another direction as well. So I did what Da Vinci would have done and jammed the nail into a board and placed it on top so that it would dry in the right shape. And as fully anticipated, the epoxy did its work and made the long black thing great again. As this was hardening out, I could focus on building the white thing. I sliced up a piece of MDF with some very precise miter cuts. Which I then carefully ruined with my old crooked crosscut saw. But hey, as Iron Mike used to say, You win some, you lose some. Now that all the parts from my white thing were cut, I could mark off the position for the fucking adorable adapter and mill it. Mill it real good. With a couple of slick moves with some tape and some glue, I was able to fold this white thing together like an origami ninja. As the white thing was drying, I could continue with the long black thing. And behold, it was as straight as something without a curve in it. The wood seemed to have absorbed quite a bit of epoxy from the first layer. So I had to add another layer to properly seal off the wood. As long as the wood is not sealed, small air bubbles will keep coming to the surface. Any air pockets that remain visible in between layers were carefully removed with some sandpaper. And then once the wood was fully sealed, I could top everything off with a final layer and remove the remaining air bubbles with a torch. Time to let the long black thing get hard and work on the metal mounting plate. I roughly need it to be about this long. And I need to have a hole over here. Uh, no. Over here and over here. To prevent the metal from rusting, I degreased it, moved my arm in a very familiar way and sprayed on a layer of clear coat. In the meantime, the white thing was dry, so I removed the tape, made myself a flat sanding block and tried to make it as straight as possible. The very next day, I was so excited to put my hands on the long black thing, as it was fully hardened. And I have to say, that the result came out just the way I wanted. Now I had to remove it from the metal beam, which was not as easy as I would have hoped for. So I started jerking on the long black thing. And then this happened. So I threw in the towel, 
to make sure that I wouldn't scratch the surface of the long black thing which was still fine. Happy as ever, I could now clean up the back and implement the magnets with some epoxy glue. I pressed them in by hand and sealed it off with a bit of extra epoxy. After this, I could start to focus on the cleanup of the long black thing and remove all the brims of epoxy. I also removed the aluminum profile that I topped off with some tape and also cleaned up the inner part of this incredibly long black thing. To finalize the black thing, I installed the LED strip into the aluminum profile with double sided tape and popped on the diffuser. Once the light source was installed, I saw that it was 10.15, so it was the highest time to install the magnet holders on the white thing. I quickly cut some MDF blocks to the desired shape, glued them into place and drilled the holes for the magnets. Then I just pressed in the magnets and destroyed the blocks. So I had to clean it up and start all over. Only this time with real wood instead of mediocre density fiber blocks. At this point only my jar of glue looked like it was having fun. As the glue was setting I took a nap and one pint of drool later I could drill the holes for the magnets and install them into the white thing. After this I started working on the cutout to allow for the long black thing to slide into the white thing. With the white thing completely cut to shape, I could finish it up using this reservoir, something that looks like a luxurious tampon and some white paint. While I leave the paint to fully dry, I already made some preparations for the installation. So I started this laser show to determine the center of the table. And from there on I marked off the position of the metal plate and drilled some holes like somebody who works on an oil rig. With some special drywall plugs that have been designed especially for drywalls, I was able to fixate the metal plate onto the ceiling. Now I could add the double sided tape to attach that fucking adorable adapter to the power outlet and prep up the LED strip wiring for the final installation of the long black thing. For the final installation I just had to snap the long black thing into place. Thanks to the magnets this was a walk in the park. Now I only had to connect the wires and cover it up with the white thing that was also held in place with the same genius solution, the magnets. So there you have it, my version of an LED fixture that redirects the power outlet in a tactful way. Now in the end I'm not fully satisfied with the design of the long black thing, but there is a saying in the design community that goes if you don't make shit from time to time, um, your diet is much too strict or, well actually I don't recall the exact saying but the fact of the matter is that I will be making another version of this that can fit on the same chassis I've built into the ceiling. I can't say too much about it yet, but what I can say is this, it involves acrylic, sandwiching and a strip joint. Now Scotty will beam me up and I will catch you guys in the next one.